Glory, glory, glory to God. We are going to swim in the praises of the ancient. That's why you know we sing some songs and some people are too deep, they can't sing them. But yet when you track, these are songs that invited men to fires and uh, slaughters and they still sang God. There are songs that you can't trace the writers. You cannot trace the people who composed them. And yet they command in the spiritual realm like the sound of the trumpets of Jericho. They sound too sharp. That every time they are sung, there is a provocation in the spirit. There is something stirred up. You know, the Bible says in the latter days, knowledge shall increase. You need to watch out what knowledge is. Knowledge is not articulation of mystery. Knowledge is understanding the simplicity of Christ. That's knowledge. It's not mystery. That when you understand what God is doing in a time, when you understand the unction, there are men who do not speak a lot, but when they find the dead, the dead get breath again. There are men who, who do, they do not split mysteries like some of us do. But when they look at cancer, cancer disappears. The mystery is in their experiences with God, and that's the full package of knowledge. Knowledge is not about scriptures. Because the Bible says the word of God is not just ink and paper. It is spirit and it is truth. It is spirit and it is truth. Oh, hallelujah. I was singing the song. That song of And when I trust the song the man I found singing the song composed it while tears were flowing off his eyes. He was at the verge of death. He, <laughs> he had to choose whether God or and his son. And his son. And every time he sang it, there is a boldness that clothed him like a mantle. It came upon him. And where there was no man, where there was no parent, where there was no father, a song came and told him it is well. When we sing such songs, you will never understand. Until you fully submit yourself to the songs, you fully give in to them. And then that very unction that was upon a man will come upon your heart and you feel like your heart is being crushed for the glory of God. When I saw the young man composing this song, oh, no revival in the remaining few months of 2022 we must get back to these places they did not have flats and houses they did not have machines sometimes their refuge was a very big stone and they had to hide under it these are men who served God where every system came against them but for the inheritance of the Christ and passing on the ashes into the spiritual eons, they tarried in the pain. They, they tarried in the neglection. Ah. 
Uganda, can we get back? Oh, come. Ziche chori. Zina. Sana. 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 Father, we thank you. We are fully yielded to what you're going to do today. We are yielded to what you're going to do today. Oh, we are fully submitted to what you're doing tonight in the name of Jesus. We are fully submitted to that grace. We are fully submitted to that power. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we give you honor and praise. Ah, we give you honor and we give you praise. You're worthy of the worship. You're worthy of the adoration. You're worthy of the praise, oh God. Oh. Father, we thank you and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Can you, can you help me just clap to God? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Allow me also, let's celebrate our choir because I need to communicate today. And then as the choir goes, I, I need you to turn to your neighbor and, and exchange some love. Alice, get a place where I can see you. I need to preach while looking at you. I need to know. <laughs> oh, glory, 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 glory. Can you say hello to your neighbor? Come on, can you say hello to your neighbor? Quickly, quickly, quickly. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. Have you said hello to your neighbor? <coughs> oh, God is faithful. Tell your neighbor God is faithful. God is faithful. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Have you said hello to your neighbor? Okay, that's wonderful. I need us to go somewhere today. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Okay, time for greeting is over. If you've not greeted that neighbor, you had all the time. Hallelujah. Let's celebrate God for what we are going through as a ministry. Come on, celebrate God for what we are going through as a ministry. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And I'm not going to use a lot of projector today, but you can just, uh, okay, you can just, okay, just, or oh, maybe I'll tell you to bring it. I need to minister from my spirit. Today I need to minister from my spirit. I have a few scriptures maybe to speak, maybe just like two. But I need to minister from my spirit. Thank you so much. Thank you, God. Tell your neighbor national prayer emergency. Hmm. 
I say, tell your neighbor, national prayer emerges. Starting from tomorrow, something is being boiled. Praise the Lord. Now, the Lord told me if we handle the four days properly, if we handle them properly, if, oh, if we handle them properly, my God, you're going to see God in our generation. Hallelujah. You're going to see God in our generation. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Are you ready for tonight? And meanwhile, you who came after the rain, you're wonderful. Because many of your colleagues are in their beds, fellowshipping with their duvets. But you're here. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> uh, okay. I've been having hints about the history. The, not the history, but the spiritual history of Uganda. I've been having hints here and there. Fellowships, they call me as the unction comes. But... Uh, I need to handle it today. I pray that I finish it today because uh, very soon uh, Pastor Sarah Mixer will be coming in to, 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 to finish us with the true source of foundation. Hallelujah. We've been talking about foundations. We've been talking about foundations, neither the grace nor the law. And uh, we've been moved. There is a reason why I had to tackle the doctrine of the law and the grace. For you to understand where you stand in our generation. Let me hope I handled it well. Praise the Lord. Let me hope I handled it well, yeah? I pray you catch it. Praise the Lord. I pray you catch it. Uh, that's, that's the thing. If, if we get that, then I, I, I don't expect to find you in the battle whether you progress or the law. Uh, I expect you to be content with what the Lord has done in your life. Hallelujah. <clears throat> But last Wednesday, <clears throat> I believe I crowned out, I crowned up the law. Because I told you, there are two things that I need to handle in the Salmon Series Foundation. And when I handle them, we are good to go. And those two things, one was... <laughs> the builders, order. thank you. Uh -huh. One was the leaders of leaders, and the second was... The message of our generation. And the message of our generation is believing God. Simply believing God. And I told you the definition of believing God is letting God be God. For we know he's a God that chastises. He's a God that judges. He's a God that loves. He's the God of mercy. He's a God of grace. But yet he's the same God who is king. That Oh God. I just pray you understand all those faces of God. So that you don't error when you meet God. I told you it is possible for you to come and meet God the king today. And you come up with a kingly mentality tomorrow and then you find a judge. You must know the facets of God. The, the, the different facets of God. To understand how you relate with him when. Hallelujah. But after handling the, uh, of course, I've handled the leader of leaders. You, you've known some leaders are looking for me, but God is faithful. Mm -hmm. Some leaders are looking for me, <laughs> but God is faithful. Actually, someone told me they, are, they, 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 they want to first finish with their <laughs> elections and then... <laughs> Amen. So, I've handled the leaders of leaders, skipped the leaders of leaders, handled the message of our times, which is the grace and the law. And then now I want to come and conclude with the leaders of leaders. I want to show you exactly what happened to those guys. Listen, I want to show you exactly what happened to those guys. And I am going to move from 1850 to 2000 and what? And two. What is the date today? 13th? 14th of September, 2022. And then tomorrow we start a new chapter. I pray I finish. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Just Father, we thank you. We thank you for the grace that works in our generation. We thank you for what you're doing in our dispensation. We thank you for awakening us even when time has left us. For you declare in Joel that you are God that redeems time. Abba, the generation is here. The men and the women of valor are here. In the mighty name of Jesus, we give you glory and give you praise, O oh God. Even as we 
dwell into your word. The entrance of your word brings light, oh God. Illuminate our understanding that we may know you a different way like we've never known you before. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Now, <clears throat> oh. one of the best monarchs of the ancient was, England was good, but the, the Gandaland, it was called the Gandaland. Uganda was called Ganda. Yeah? And Ganda was more associated with the Buganda. However, when they spoke about the Ganda, they spoke about a number of tribes. They, they spoke about the land. Yeah? And the system was one of the best monarchs ever recorded in the African history. The Ganda was one of the most organized kingdoms. And it was associated with mostly the first and the foremost was the defense system, the, 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 the administrative system, the centralized system. How they, 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 they managed and organized and kept peace in the land was peculiar. Not even the whites had the art to do what we used to do. But now our spiritual history starts from the 1950s. But I am telling you, Uganda is not just the source of the Nile. It's the source of the gospel. You cannot tell me you speak about Apostle Arnold if you don't speak about Madame Rose. Madame Rose is my mother. Silently, in the words you have not spoken, she's there. So you cannot speak about the river Nile without speaking about Uganda. Because the, the true river Nile is in ginger. The rest is just a flow of the truth. I don't know that you know what I mean. I met a man and actually I met him again a few weeks ago in Mubende. I traveled and I met him in Mubende. And for him he's sure that when Moses was born he was hid around ginger. And he will, hey, you're laughing. Eh? Actually, I think today he traveled. He went to South Africa. He went to buy a certain village. Six million dollars. Say, I'm just going to buy something. Six million dollars. Their land is cheap. And he says after that, he's going to buy land in Russia because he wants to export wheat. But for the first time after three years, he left Mubende this week. Atura Butu Ziwali and billions come for him. When you talk to that guy, you will know. Me, I thought I was deep. When I met this guy, I knew guys are deep. The guy will tell you the celestial material that is in the hair, how it connects to God. He will tell you. Huh. And then he told me, <laughs> let me not go to that guy. Let me continue with the, with the history. So what I'm trying to say is that uh, Uganda knew the gospel before the gospel. Of course, we are lied by the whites that uh, it's the missionaries that brought. It's not. Africa was divided into two in the ancient days, and it was one continent. It was called Ethiopia. Africa was called Ethiopia. So even Uganda was called Ethiopia. Egypt was under Ethiopia. So it was divided into two, but all the parts were called Ethiopia. So when you see Ethiopia in the Bible, they might not be speaking about Ethiopia, the place. They might be speaking about Uganda. He, even when Philip baptized the Ethiopian eunuch, the guy would have been a Chigundu somewhere, or oh, Opio. <laughs> so when he says Ethiopian, it was, it was the same as African, because that, that was how Africa was termed before. So what I'm trying to say is that uh, there is no one who brought to us the gospel. No one. The gospel was in this land. So there are two components that were very important in the land and, and there were the centralized system, the political system, the way they governed themselves as a kingdom. But secondly, it was the strong spiritual system. Uganda had the Uganda, the over the Ganda or the Buganda. Okay, if I use Buganda, you know I'm so, I'm talking about the Ganda. When I say Uganda, you know I'm speaking about Ganda. You, like literally, I'm speaking about the same thing. Yeah, 
So in case I shuffle it, just don't lose me. So it had four dimensions of God. The first dimension was the Katonda. And he was the less known but most respected. He was one who was the creator of the creation. And he was the God above all gods. Yeah? The second layer was the Rubari. Now, Rubari is more than what you think. Some of you think Rubari were winds, but they were supernatural men. Now, for example, I was reading about Chiwuka. Chiwuka was the Rubare of war. And it is said that that guy, when he's fighting, he would fly like, a, like an eagle man flying. And he was killed in a place called Mbari, but not the other Mbari. That place is in Mpiji. Day to day Mpiji. Chiwuka. When you read about Dungu, you might. <laughs> When you read about Mukasa, Naruanga, all those were actually, they were termed to be guardians. And if you want to know about guardians, tomorrow I'm going to start with, I'm going to start with guardians and watchers. I need to explain what it means to be a guardian in the spirit and a watcher in the spirit. That's what I'm starting with tomorrow. That's what I'm starting with tomorrow. Because the Lord told me there are guardians here and there are watchers here. There, there are guardians and watchers. Guardians and watchers. You remember the... Have you got me? Now, tomorrow I'm going to explain part of it. So, it was God. Then the Rubares. Yeah? Then, don't be scared. Then the Mizimus. Yeah? Then the Misambas, that was the spiritual fraternity of the Uganda. But not everyone worshipped the Rubares or the Mizimus or the Misambas. Uh, I, I think you people don't want the spiritual history. Let us go in the, let us just read Yokana. Your name Yokana. I, I need you to catch me. I, I'm not, like, literally. If, 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 if you give me your spirit, you will know where I'm coming from. Because you can't talk about lost men if you don't talk about where they came from. Are you getting me? If you don't know where they came from. But even in the midst of the Luvalis, in the midst of the, the Misambas, uh, there was a God in the land. There was a God in the land. But because one of the kings... Actually, the, 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 the Rubare called Chibuka was, was killed under the king called Nachibingi. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now, when we speak about those names, those are deep names. They are sanctified names. I don't want you to, to look at Muchala Chibuka as though. <laughs> some, some, men have, some men are sanctified. Praise the Lord. Are you getting me? Yeah? So, However much the, you, the Gandalan was surrounded by demons, surrounded by guardians, the land knew God. The land knew God. There was a God that was known. But things got lost when one of the kings of the Gandaland adopted the worship of the Lubaris and uh, the whole system of the land was, was centralized to one man who was also believed to be a, a, a semi-god. He was believed to be human and believed to be God at the same time, the king. So when he adopted the concept of the Lubales and the Misambwas, uh, the kingdom of the Ganda started worshipping not the Lubales but with the Lubales. Are you hearing me? Up to now, when people are getting out of their houses, they consult Dungu. Uh, when the rain goes out of the land for some time, there are people who go and start crying to Mukasa. When men need, womb need to give birth, they go and look for Naruanga. And results are seen. 
broken. Some of you are very deep. You don't want to hear those things in church. Praise the Lord. And yet when you go to your market, to your shop, you, the person you're working with first consulted Dongo before he came. And you, you didn't consult anybody because you went back home late and you slept. You know me, I've spent seven years without speaking about these things. By the time I speak about them, there is something in the land. There is something. We cannot be ignorant about the vices and the devices of the enemy. We can't. And you think you're going to win him. No. Actually, one of the things, I told you last Sunday, one of the things that the enemy wants is simply for you not to know. Though you don't want to know. Kati, when you say, me, I don't want to know. I'm for Christ. He who is in me is greater than the one in the world. <laughs> That is your concept. But it doesn't mean for him he doesn't want to know. Actually, he's better when you don't know and when you don't want to know. He's better that way. So after the king adopted that, it became the norm. The norm of the land. The land that was the source of the one true God became a fraternity of gods and goddesses who do not die because they are goddesses, they, they are spirits. They appeared into the bodies of men, but when you go back to the flood of Noah, where the Bible says, and the sons of God fell in love with the children, with the daughters of men, and they produced giants. The giants were 50% human, 50% spirits. Are you hearing me? Do you know why one of the darkest signals of the Antichrist is the pyramid with an eye above? It is because these men came from the Tower of Babel and they became giants. And when the flood killed, it killed the flesh. The spirits are still existing up now. So they are trying to show that the tithe to the high priest who called the dead up. <laughs> and these are the things you live with. These are the things you live with. You live with men who are in synchrony with the dead. And we don't tell you because you're under grace and we don't tell you because, you know, you're deep. And before you know, your lives are frustrated because you're ignorant of the vices of the enemy. You're just, you're just ignorant. So the Mizimus are... <laughs> Oh, God give me grace. They are provoked by smoke, burning incense. And we know according to the tabernacle, in the holy place, the incense is burned at the golden altar to present to the holy of holies, to create a cloud from whence God dwells. Yeah? But God has a specific fragrance that invites him. Not every fragrance invites him. It's like a cacao. I don't know that you understand what I'm talking about. But we never can I move it? Okay, but then you know, Nakatuka Waka, no Savango Jamaica, Mukama, 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 Ogana to come with Mazok Saba. What to Kiroku Jamu? Nayano Sango Moon Ayagala or Kocha Akabani, Kawan Yochesamu Moyo. The incense and the altar you would have burned, the incense and the fragrance, the smoke you would have created in your prayer closet. Another man is using it to evoke a dead spirit. And for them, they have all the time. And they and then children of God think they are under the love of God. He who is in them is greater than the one in the world. Oh, God. Okay. Now, that was the spiritual system of the Ganda land. It's a spiritual system. And let me tell you, a spiritual system never dies. It never dies. Actually, the biggest 
the biggest challenge is when a generation comes and it doesn't know about the system. And doesn't know about the system. The fathers we talk about the Chivengeres, they fought with Misambwas. I, I told you about, actually, Pastor Asha will come here and tell you. On one crusade in Makerere here of one man called Balabikubo, a port came. The mama fin of the, those days was not carrying money. It, Pastor Asha was in the congregation. May I have the story? When he, wa, he, he told me they waited to see people fought with demons. But now they are deeply hidden in your WhatsApps, in your Facebook. You're just... <laughs> when Barabi Kuba was standing and the chief witch comes, and the pot, the guy just stood and, and said, he told the pot, Genda, the pot came. Up to the pulpit. And from that day, up to when the man went to be with the Lord, he became an evangelist. Move up, Guno, Mrebe, go to the moon, or Montavudo, Cunyan, Sassi, Ayoteso, Bani, now quarter sent the Nazireta Cuchituti. And nothing happens. Those days, the men that knew, the, because you cannot command in a realm you don't know. If you're ignorant about the spirit, then there is nothing you can command in the spirit. That is why when the sons of Skeva rose up and they went to attack a demon, the demons gave them. <laughs> the Bible says, "Misimu jaba kuwa nejiwa ambula nebata ambula." You don't just wake up to, to attack what you don't. There is a man recently, a man of God, who rose up and went and burnt a shrine while speaking in tongues. Up to now, he's still in Butavika. Up to now, recently, up to now, the guy is still in Butavika. He just burnt a shrine. You go church. And after charging, you, you, you're charged by what you charged for. Up to me. What will you say about weapon? Kirako, no be a pan kirako. What will you say about weapon? Kirako. There are things you, you have not trained your spirit. You know, the, the, the demons that were, were attacked the sons of Skeva, just ask them, hey, Paul, we know. Jesus, we know. But who are you? As they were speaking, slaps started smoking. You, see, you know what I mean? Because in the spirit, they had not got the structure to encounter certain things. When we tell you we are fasting for 40 days, we are not just trying to tell you to prove a point. We are trying to tell you that you can increase on your structure in the spirit. You can increase on your authority in the spirit. And this increase comes with the increase of knowledge. And knowledge cannot increase when you still have the knowledge of portion and billions. There is an artificial intelligence that has to decrease that the, 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 the supernatural starts increasing. It does not increase either way. There is a yielding that you need to yield to God for it to increase. And when you increase, you will know. Hmm. When you increase, you will know. When you increase, you will. As a ministry, by the way, not individuals, as a ministry, we've increased. Hmm. As a ministry, in authority, as a ministry, we've increased. <clears throat> you see what I said? So what happened was that after all this system, of course, the Gandaland was given away to the Rubales, was given away to the Misambwas, was given away to the Mizimus. Different seasons, different sacrifices were made. Different seasons, different things were made. However, in the year, now I'm starting, <laughs> but don't worry, I may not finish. In the year 1850, came a man, in specific 18, 18, 1856, came a man called Kabaka Mutesa I. Kabaka Mutesa I, after inheriting the system from, and by the way, what I'm going to speak, do I have anyone in senior six doing history? Senior, senior four, senior six. When you're doing history, uh, just record my history with the spirit. When you go to your paper, write your teacher's spirit, teacher's <laughs> history. Because the history I'm going to give you, I, I, I didn't get it out of books. 
I, I, I tarried. Mm, I tarried. So, um, in the year 1856, uh, there are bees, they, they, they crown a man called Mutesa I. Now, Kabaka Mutesa I in the 1856, um, by that time, the Arabs had started uh, coming into the land. Because time came and uh, the Ganda people needed to understand the Katonda. Because in those days he was the less known. Because let me tell you, it is possible for a land to know God and then the land is drained of the knowledge of God and it goes back to zero and start worshipping other things. It is possible. For the wave and the wind and the cloud and the presence of God to shift from a land to to another place. Are you following me? So in Uganda it had shifted. Actually they knew no king would make a decree unless the Rubales have spoken. And they had mastered the art and the accuracy of seeking from the Rubales. Their left ears were sharp. They, and actually, it was very hard to fight the Ganda people and win them. It was one of the strongest systems in Africa. So there came a king called Kabaka Mutesa I. In the 1856, he was crowned to be the king. And being the king, he wanted to know, who is this Katonda? We, we don't pay attention to him. But all we know, he's greater than the Rubales. He, who is this Katonda? Then he invited the Muslims. When he invited the Muslims, the, the gospel of the Muslims and the Katonda was not rhyming. Oh, you're not getting me. You're not getting me. It was not rhyming. Actually, the, the Muslims also have what? They also have their own Rubales called Majin. Let me not go into that because I didn't come to tell you the history of Muslims. I came to tell you the history of the, the Ganda land. Praise the Lord. Now, the king comes and then actually it, 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 he almost became Muslim. He almost actually in his last days surprisingly he died like, as a Muslim. And then his son Kabaka Mwanga, some of you never knew, Kabaka Mwanga died born again. He died in the, he died in, uh, uh, nine, he died in 1897, most probably 1897. He died from a country that is difficult to pronounce, Seychelles. Is it called Seychelles? Seychelles. Help me. <laughs> he died from that country and he had given his life to Christ. Kabaka Mwanga, he, he, the one who slayed the what? The martyrs. But now let me explain to you that account. When Mutesa was eager to know who is this Katonda, and actually he wrote, actually he didn't write first. There were explorers that were coming in the land, and when they were coming in the land, they met the king. And they started, because the Muslim had started establishing trade with Mutesa. Mutesa one, yeah? They had started establishing a relationship with Mutesa I. They had started establishing a, a friendship with him. And he, oh, they almost converted him to Islam. But when he was comparing the Katonda, they know, because they knew him a certain way. Yet they did not know him. But have you ever been there? Now you know something, but you don't know it. But when a person explains it to you, you know it. Actually, if you sit in the gospel and you don't know, in, 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 in most cases, as we preach, we are confirming what you affirmed. Like, literally, what we say, you know. Even what I am telling you, some of you know. Yet, you did not study history. But you know, because your spirits are ancient. <laughs> you, you are 22. But your spirit is, uh, and before the foundation of the upper pyramid because the pyramid is down but it is disconnected with the upper pyramid the upper pyramid has an eye which is the most significant symbol of the Illuminati 
Because that I means that we are looking for a man who is going to complete the Tower of Babel. What was the mission of the Tower of Babel? The mission of the Tower of Babel was simple. Let us raise a tower and we reach unto God and we dethrone him. <laughs> so even the Rubares, yeah, maybe because they said they were men, they even know where they stayed. But when they died, their spirit stayed. Because I told you, when a wicked man dies, he becomes a system. So men are still functioning under the system of Musoke. And now when men need rain, they go to Musoke. It's only church that doesn't mind. I don't know that I was with Papa Goma when we went to Ushenyi. And the whole Matoke plantations were dried up. You remember? I don't know that I was with you. I think, to Wumbi there, I think I was with you. Then I got the banana leaves. And then I, I laid them down. And the Spirit of the Lord told me, lay on the banana leaves and let the church pray. And I laid on them and we laid. They didn't know where the disease came from. But the last time I knew after a year, the Amatoke had started flourishing again. Yeah? So we are trying to tell you that the solution must be in church. But if church does not provide the solution, there is a Dungu somewhere who knows how to hunt. If we cannot bless men from service, then as they go out, they can meet a system called Dungu. And he's the king of hunting. Men go out to hunt money. Men go out to hunt business. It is still a hunting in the spirit. So they can use the system called Dungu to hunt. Men are still looking for rain from Musoki. And those are ancient systems. Let us first come back to the truth. If we cannot handle our own systems, eh, leave the prince of Pasha alone. It is better to handle <laughs> Musoke than to handle the Prince of Pasha. Because Pasha is uh, another place. You're in, you're in the Gandaland. They are guardians of the Gandaland. If the children of God are asleep, who God has elevated? Because now, what made them guardians is because they were spirit and bodies. What qualifies a Christian to be a guardian is because the spirit of God now resides in you. So you are a spirit in a body. So that's how you qualify to be a guardian. That even when you go to be with the Lord, your mantle is still functioning in men that are awakened to it. I don't know if they're getting me. So these, 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 these things are there. The Misambwas, they are there. Actually, they, they were believed to reside on mountains. They are believed to reside in, on waters and other physical plateaus and physical features. And I told you the last Sunday, I told you about one of, one of them. They are not men. They are not half men. The Misambas are not half men, and they are not half spirit. They are fully spirits, but they appear as men. So, so when you meet it, it's in the body. The, the Musamba is in the dimension of the angels, where Hebrews tells you that be careful of entertaining visitors because among them you might entertain angels. If you got an old ancient Muganda man, he would call those angels misambas because their spirits appearing in men. And let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, we stay with them. We have them and they are like men on the villages. We have them in our working places. We stay with them. They, they are there. You look at a man, they are there. And in the same way, even angels, we stay with them. There are men you, you, you surround yourself with that are not just mere men. There are angels from above. You, you stay with them. You greet them like any other person. You even get annoyed <laughs> when they piss you off. May the Lord give you understanding. The spirit realm is more busy than the physical. More busy than the physical. You sleep one second and the world will run 100 years ahead. One second. You do one mistake and you cause generations. Listen, you can do one mistake like this. You can do one mistake like this. And then your children will be inheritors of that mistake. 
your children's children will inherit on that mistake. Why? Because you did not successfully understand the patterns of spiritual time. Terminant again. So what I'm trying to say is that Uganda, the, the Gandaland had guardians. Th those Nubares were guardians. And the Misambas were spirits that could clothe men. And, and I told you, I think one of the sermons, I think it was, one, what was the previous sermons? Uh, dimensions in God. I told you the dimension of angels and I told you the Misambas are invited by men. They are planted. But a man can invite a Musamba and the man dies and the Musamba stays. Until men rise to tell them that you are not meant to be in the bodies. You belong to the pits in hell. And to do that, many of the misambas live by sacrifice. The more you sacrifice to them, the more they get life. And many are sacrificed to... Oh, some of them are young in the spirit, so they sacrifice chicken, goats. But there are those who are elevated the nyege nyege style. Oh God. So the Gandalan had a spiritual system and one of the, 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 the Kabakas had to channel to the other dark system. However, all the Kabakas knew the Katonda who was the Lisodene, who was the Lugabadunda, who was the Katonda with Tonda. The, the, the king of kings was still in existence because Uganda is the center or the pivot of the whole world. I know many of you are not believing. Many of you are not believing. Uganda is Katonda Wate Komukonogwe Okora Munsi. This land here. This land here. If you got us and took us to Israel, and you got the few Israelites, you, you get like 100 and put them in Uganda, the Ugandans you've taken to Israel will die there. And the Israel that you've put in Uganda, in a period less than three months, there will be a superpower. I told you last time that these people come, the, the land we say that is a semi-desert, Karamoja, they come and they bring a plane and they, they take the, the Karamoja soil to plant apples. And they are leading suppliers of apples. Now, what if you get them and you bring them to Karamoja? Ela Zolamalia. Oh, God. It is us who are busy on computers. Oh my God, Papa, I need a job. If move me, if you even know, you know, I need a job, I need a job. Uh. <laughs> Those men are job makers, they are not job seekers. According to the spirit, Uganda is a spiritual basket. But I told you of a God who is taking everything and not growing fat. Did, did I tell you about that God? Yeah, I met him. And he's, in, he's from the West. Omani, God allowed me to unleash some of these mysteries, so I can't keep them. He's from the West. The command was old, first of all. Very tiny, as though he has not eaten for like three months. All the ribs were on top, but in front of the guy was a line of baskets. The guy was eating, 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 eating. And in deep prayers, I saw the word GMO on his forehead. And all the seed of the land is gone. We are now given to the seed that does not grow seed, as the Bible says. That inside every fruit shall come seed. Now when you grow maize, you have to grow maize that you're going to eat. You cannot spare a seed. And then the spiritual principle was, whatever is created has its own seed in it. And men are, because the, the, the coming of the Antichrist is very simple. It just rotates. Like if you if the seed is within it, then it makes something, which is it, but without the seed. That is why he's Christ and the Antichrist. It's just a small rotation. And let me tell you, right now in the European countries, there are Antichrist churches. And the main symbol of the Antichrist church is the cross. But the only difference is that this cross is not upside up, it is upside down. But they are there. 
It is one of the, mess, the biggest symbols of the Satanists. I'm going to say, 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 i Praise the Lord. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. I told you on the same road, there is a God who is a baby. A God who is a baby. The car thing is a baby, but he never grows. For years, the guy doesn't grow. Come back again. The concept of the Mizimus <laughs> moves with the burning of incense. You can never evoke a dead spirit if you don't burn smoke. And it is equivalent to the level of the prayers of the righteous. That is why we were given a name above all names. That is at the mention of the name of Jesus. Every need does what? Why? Because Jesus is the one that died. Now, when you burn incest, the dead. Oh, that mystery is too heavy for you now. I, I will share it one time. And in the same manner, there are other Jesus-like spirits. A man dies and you come to a man. He burns some, you, you had the perfumes. Eh? Burn some perfumes and uh, your grandfather, Tamale's spirit comes back. You know my grandfather is called Tamari. Basil and Posit, Chandaja, for me, Tabata. Chimba, what are your Chimba? What Chimba? So Chimba comes back. A man just burns a few sticks here and there. And then Chimba's spirit is back. And he knows everyone from the time he existed up to you. And men are. <coughs> men are. Seeking guidance and counsel from the necromancies and uh, the systems of the dead. There are men you live with and uh, they are living according to the map of the dead spirit. A person every other time needs to take the world. The Lord demanded that you be that light. The Lord demanded that you be the way you are, that you come from Uganda. It means that what I am saying, you know, you know. If you can code, you know. So what happened was uh, Kabaka Mwanga knew the God he wanted to know even though he didn't know him. So when he listens to the Muslims he's like ah, ah, you're talking about something I'm not looking for Allah. I'm looking for something else. And then the explorers come and they start defining the God and he said this is the one. Where do you come from? We come from the queen. And he wrote to the queen and told the queen, send me some men here. So that is how the Kabaka Mutesa one wrote to the, queen, to the queen of England to send what? To send missionaries to the land. To t because he identified and he knew that this God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, he's the God I'm looking for. So the missionaries come into the land. When they come into the land, uh, I told you that one of the significance of the spiritual appearance is that it appears exactly how, uh, as how the natural appears. When the land is fertile, even the spiritual land is fertile for the land. Oh. It means that one of the most fertile lands in the spirit is Uganda. When revival reaches Uganda, it is quicker to go to different nations. Now, let me tell you, one of the nations that is revived is Nigeria. Now, they are moving in the revival. But the revival they are moving in, Uganda has neglected it for more than 12 years. We have neglected this revival for more than what? And in years ago, I saw the cloud shifting. I remember I spoke to Minister Charity. Before knowing the men, but now I know them. I told her, I see four men. Only one man is in Uganda. But, but the three were in Nigeria. I told her. And I told her one is the father of the other. And I told her what everyone carried. I don't remember. Did I tell you? Yeah. Five years ago, we were at the mountain praying. I see four men. I told her, I see the cloud shift. 
Uganda has neglected revival for 12 years. 12 years. And I'm going to explain to you why and how I got to 12. So Uganda is a fertile land in the spirit. When revival lands in Uganda and it lands, it will, it will, it will quickly bear fruits. So when the missionaries came to the land, Kabaka Mutesa habitated them. Brought them to, to the what? To, to, to the palace and, you know, took care of them. And then submitted his loyal young men to serve the missionaries. Now, at this moment, there was no single scripture. Because they didn't know how to read or to write. The communication was a spiritual communication. Oh, They learned the gospel by the spirit. Men spoke English and the Bagandas got revived. Because all they needed was not a language. All they needed was to know a God above the gods. So these men come. The men don't know English yet. But the moment they sat under these men, when they spoke, they knew what they were speaking about. And surprisingly, these men learned the patterns of God out of no language. Mm. In the year 1877, men were crazy for God. They did not know English yet, but they were crazy. They could not worship Lubare anymore. Get into the year 1880. They could not worship Lubare anymore. They could not sacrifice to the goddess who takes virgins anymore. They could not sacrifice to the moon. They could not go to Lake Narubare to sacrifice cows. They could not. But do you know even now men practice sacrifices on Lake Narubare? Do you know up to now there are men who do not call Lake Victoria Lake Victoria. They still call it Narubare because Narubare is the mother of all gods. Every god, all, uh, I wish I could read you all the gods and you know, there is God called Guru. But that one, they did not know him. They, did, they didn't even know where he stayed. Because, and, and then later they realized that Guru was the dwelling place of, of Katwanda. He was not a god. But they named him God. Because every time there are sometimes they met portals from Guru. Uh, there are sometimes in their worship they got access to Guru. And they realized now this is a dwelling place of the Katonda. And the, the, in, among the Rubares, it was only Guru who was not known. The rest were known very well. They knew where they stayed, they knew what they did, they knew what they would do. The guardians, they would do. They knew. But Guru became an atmosphere that when they worshipped under Guru, they, they realized that when we worship under Guru, there is a fragrance of the Katonda that we get. So when, 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 the, when the whites come and dwell in the land, um, and dwell in the land, they, they, they are quick to tap into what these men carry because it would identify with what they, they were. However much these men spoke English, the Luganda men reacted spiritually in Luganda. They reached a place in the 1880s, early 1880s, where they could not hearken to the king because they had understood the king of kings. They could only serve the king to the extent of the king. Uh, in other words, the worship, because the king of, of the Gandaland was considered to be a, a, a semi-god, so he was worshipped. Up to now, there is an altar in the land in Mengo which, does, which never runs out. Did you know that? There is a smoke that the moment it goes out any second, it signifies that the Kabaka has passed on to go to his ancestors. 